Hello everybody, I'm Matt Boston. I'm a PhD student in the Programmable Structures Laboratory at Purdue University under my advisor, Professor Andres Arrieta. And we'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to my talk on multi-stable honeycomb architectures for spanwise wing morphing. The F-14 Tomcat is arguably one of the most successful morphing wing aircraft in history, as seen by its long service record and the sheer number of aircraft built. If we ask ourselves why it was such a successful design, it gives us an insight into what makes morphing wings really effective in general. The F-14 is really designed to maximize performance at both supersonic and subsonic flight speeds. And really, it's this ability to circumvent some of the, the natural trade-offs we see in engineering that really is what makes morphing wings advantageous. We can see in multiple studies like the, the ones above that when an optimizer is allowed to tailor the wing's geometry, um, it tends to favor these unique convert configurations um, when introduced with different flight conditions. So when we're choosing which morphing modes to target, much of the recent research has focused on airfoil morphing for tailoring the lift distribution along the span of the wing. This is generally to increase the efficiency or reduce the drag penalty associated with control surfaces. But if we're looking at causing the greatest effect for distinctly different flight regimes, planform morphing, as uh, shown in the previous slide and here, um, has far more potential benefit. For our research, we've chosen to focus on decreasing induced drag specifically at low speeds by allowing uh, a change in the, the wing span. Historically, span changes have been generally accomplished by more mechanistic means, kind of like you see here. Typically, uh, a shell over or inside the, the root of the, the wing um, is extended by some type of an actuation system. Uh, this can be generally fairly heavy and involves the use of a number of moving parts. More recent research has investigated the use of compliance structures, such as a zero Poisson ratio honeycomb, uh, that is used to support an elastic skin. This, of course, still uses uh, some kind of an actuation system to extend or retract the wing. This naturally begs the question, what advantage is there to using a multi-stable structure? Well, if we model the deformation of a linear elastic structure like the one we show here in one dimension like a spring, we get the expected straight line. A bistable structure, on the other hand, exhibits a more of a non-linear force displacement behavior. It will, at some point, depending on the way it's loaded, attempt to spontaneously deform into a second stable shape. What is particularly fascinating, however, is the energy requirements necessary to deform each of these structures. The, the linear elastic structure requires energy through the entirety of its deformation, the, the full area under the curve here. The bistable structure instead requires no further input from its actuator after passing the instability. This provides the, the potential for using much smaller lightweight actuators and still allows for the kind of large deformations necessary for shape adaptability. In a conceptual analysis of span morphing, uh, it's been shown that relatively small changes in length, uh, as much as 40% in some cases, can have the, the most benefit in terms of drag reduction. We, we therefore don't propose that we replace the entire wing with a compliant morphing structure, but instead just a, a small section near the wingtip. This kind of creates something of a hybrid extensible spar. And in our paper, we present a multi-scale approach to the design of this structure. In our work, we've characterized the mechanical response of the two honeycomb architectures you can see here. Both of these use very similar unit cells, with the, the one on the right showing a different arrangement, as well as some additional reinforcement. What's really interesting, though, is that when you compare the relative density of these two honeycombs, 
you can see that the, the hexagon, despite having this additional reinforcement, doesn't have a significant increase in density. And so despite having a lower possible reduction in length, we know from the previous slide, we don't actually need this dramatic change in length to see a performance increase. And when we compare the, the relative stiffnesses of the two honeycombs, we can see clearly that the hexagonal honeycomb is dramatically stiffer. So this is definitely what we've used moving forward. Uh, it is worth mentioning that in the collapsed state, the honeycomb shows a pretty significant decrease in stiffness. Um, and this trend holds true for both axial and uh, flexural stiffnesses. We take the idea a step further by combining two of these honeycomb plates into what we've kind of referred to as a meta beam by coupling their bending deformation. The idea here is to increase the second moment of inertia and therefore the flexural stiffness while maintaining a lightweight and extensible structure. We've done some additional characterization of this meta beam as well as produced some physical prototypes like what you can see here. But for the sake of time, I won't really go into detail about it here and would encourage anyone who is interested to read the paper. What I really want to show is that we've implemented this metabeam structure in a simulated version of our hybrid wing spar. This is compared to a, a beam made from carbon fiber that mimics a, a more conventional wing box uh, construction with leading and trailing spars and ribs spaced periodically down the length of the span. For the uh, extensible spar, you can see that approximately the last third of the, the wingtip has been replaced with the multi-stable honeycomb meta beam and uses an elastic skin for transmission of the aero loads. Uh, those loads, as well as the, the wingspan, the 750 millimeters, are meant to simulate a, a small UAV with half the, the lift being applied as an elliptical load distribution over the length of the span. The, the results from this analysis are certainly very encouraging. Um, as you can see, the deformation of the conventional construction and the hybrid in its collapse uh, state, um, which is more flexible, like I said, are very similar. Um, and in fact, these are scaled up to show that um, the really the hybrid is just uh, more concentrated on the, the wingtip, um, but otherwise they're basically on the, the same order of magnitude. Um, and then even in the expanded state, which here is not scaled, um, you can kind of see that the hybrid wing shows very little deflection relative to the, the wingspan of, again, 750 millimeters. So we're, we're really currently investigating what impact, if any, this will have on the, the wing's performance. So to sum things up, We've shown that not only is there a benefit to having this span-wise shape adaptability, but there's also an advantage to using a compliant multi-stable structure to enable that change in length, particularly through the use of smaller, more lightweight actuators. Uh, we've also investigated the properties and mechanical response of two different honeycombs with similar unit cells, uh, showing that the, the hexagon uh, had a clear benefit over the, the more diamond-like uh, shape. And perhaps most importantly, I think, we've demonstrated that this notion of a hybrid extensible spar is at least feasible. And we're excited to continue to investigate what kind of performance gains we can get from such a structure, uh, what trade-offs will need to be made in terms of weight, and how we can more efficiently model the, the complex uh, honeycomb in order to more efficiently perform some optimization studies and come up with a manufacturable design. With that, I'd like to thank our collaborators at the Army Research Lab, Drs. Todd Henry and Francis Phillips, and would like to thank all of you for your time and attention. Thank you very much.